Ladies and gents, here it is. Japanese 101 is back for now. I'm doing another lesson today, and it's lesson 46, as if we as we've been told by Evie. And Evie keeps track, so I trust. And Evie, we trust. And um, let's just hop in. Let's just jump into it. Mm, today, um, I want to essentially talk about uh, can't help but doing something, right? So when you when you're um, like you can't resist an urge or whatever, like you can't resist doing something. And there's essentially two big ways of uh, phrasing this. Um, and or rather, there's like one big way, and then there's a more formal way, but they're really the same. So today we're going to talk about um, naide wa iradenai, right? Naide wa iradenai, which essentially um, just means that like you you can't help. Like once again, um, it's a gaman dekinai. Well, gaman dekinai is the literal translation of cannot resist, whereas naide wa iradenai is like can't help but to do something. So there's like some action over here, right? You will have some sort of action over here, like a verb. And then like naide wa, it's conjugated to its negative te form naide with wa irarenai, okay? So interestingly, the first thing that might stand out, um, the verb that we add here, this auxiliary, is literally cannot be or cannot exist. It's iru, right? So you hopefully know iru, right? Iru is like to exist for animate beings. And irarenai is its potential form, right? So the potential form means that it can or cannot do something, or like it can or cannot exist. So irarenai literally means cannot be, cannot exist. So naide wa, oh gosh, that's not what I wanted. Here. Naide wa irarenai, right? Kind of like cannot be. So um, the first thing, right? Because this is, wow, shut. Uh, there's a bike outside because this is a double negative again it's like negative negative right um let's compare it first to um so it's naida irarenai you forgot the wa usually it's always naide irarenai is never said really you always have to have the wa the wa is really important um more like because it's just a convention like um i almost never see it with the wa left out i don't think um dame dame yeah um I don't think naide irare. That just sounds weird. Like it's always wa. It's like te wa ikenai. You can't have te. Yeah, you could short it to ja ikenai or something like that. But yeah, like it's it's almost. It's like always with the wa. It's always there. The first thing I want to uh, talk about because this is also a double negative. Let's actually compare it to nakereba naranai, which is something that I have talked about in the past. Um, these are the like the the must or must not, right? Nakereba naranai. Yet again, another double negative. Um, if you if you don't know nakereba naranai, then um, you can go into the playlist. I'm pretty sure that uh, episode on must must not is up, and if not, then I hope that like I can upload it. But yeah, um, essentially another double negative to emphasize that you must do something. So how is it different from naidewa iradenai, right? Like what's what's the difference for that? purpose, I've prepared like two sentences that we can look at. The number one sentence is here. Kimatsu shiken ga, um, kimatsu shiken ga aru no de. So kimatsu shiken is a end of term exam, right? So like an exam at school at the end of the term. Ga aru no de. So because, here is the, the no de saying because. Because I have this exam, konban Right? So this is like a bit of a like this is kind of like the weird version of it, right? You wouldn't really say this. So this is kind of like a bit questionable. So what does this mean? This means like because I have an exam coming up, right? Because I have the Kimatsu Shiken, like I can't help but study. It's a bit of a weird thing to say, right? So let's compare to to this. And um, I can also kind of get rid of this right here, so we have space. Kimatsu shiken ga aru no de konban benkyo shi nakereba naranai. So this is better, right? This is better. This is this. The upper here is a lot very questionable. Like the big thing about naide wa irare nai is kind of like you can't resist, right? Oh, um, Roti the kitty. Thanks for following. Foro arigatou gozaimachi. The big deal with like naide wa irare nai is this sort of like cannot resist or can't help. 
Whereas if you have an exam, it's not that you can't resist studying. It's probably the opposite. Probably you don't actually want to study, but you must, right? So this here is the must. And that fits a lot better. So this is the much more appropriate way of forming this sentence. Um, the upper one sounds pretty weird. It sounds like, you know, you're tempted to study or something like that. I gotta study. Yeah, so, kimatsu shiken ga aru no de, konban, benkyou shi na kereba naranai. I have the exam coming up, so tonight I must study. Whereas this, like, I can't help but study. It's, it sounds like your body just has the urge to study and you're like, oh, I have to. Which, to be fair, maybe that's true, but it's most likely not what you want to say in this situation, right? So, can you see kind of the difference between nai de wa irare nai and na kereba naranai? And this kind of goes for all the must forms. So you have different ones, nakereba, uh, naranai. You also have nakute wa ikenai and all of these, right? But they all have very, they all basically mean the same thing of you must do something. So that's how these two are different, okay? So let's see. Um, the next thing I'm gonna look at you, uh, I'm the next time I'm gonna look at you, I'm gonna look at you. The next thing we're gonna look at is real quick. Thanks for the raid. Hello, everyone. Good timing. We just started the lesson. I got, I got spooked by that, as always. It's my raid, so I chose the sound. Uh, let me just see. We have... Yeah, I need to get rid of this as well. Okay. So, the next thing I'm gonna quickly discuss here is the other form. Hello, raiders. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Game Grammar. We're doing a grammar lesson right now about um, can't help but... Uh, and um, and zu is actually what we're going to talk about right now. Hey, Tebi. So, uh, zu, let's quickly talk about zu. So, naide and zu are, are like the same thing, okay? So, keep in mind when, when you encounter zu in your head, you can kind of think like, oh, yes, that is essentially the same as naide, okay? Grammatically and in terms of meaning, it's, it's kind of the same thing, right? Because what zu is, is it's att attaches to the negative stem, just like nai does. Per definition, like, the nai form is the negative stem plus nai. Thanks for the follow. Um, I guess, shokuyo mogura, shokuyo mogura-san. Um, and, and zu is just the same. It's just a more literary form. It's more of a written form. It's It sounds a bit more fancy, a bit more formal, a bit more archaic, depending on the situation. Um, but its meaning is essentially the same. It's just a negative, um, it attaches to the negative stem, and it um, it is a negative conjunctive. What that means, it's just, it's conjunctive, which means it, it hooks to another verb, generally, or another clause, and it's also a negative, which is exact, again, that's exactly the same thing that naide does, right? So to give you some examples of how that would work, is for example, um, if we have uh, if we have shiru, which means to know, right? Shiru. So how we get like the zu conjugation? Well, we get the negative stem, which is shira, right? How do you get the negative stem? You you just take the verb, right, and you conjugate it to the a for godang, and then essentially it's what you would have if you wrote shiranai but you got rid of nai, right? So that's the negative stem by definition. It's very simple. And then you can just be like, okay, instead of nai, we're just gonna add zu, okay? Shirazu. And there you go, that's the that's the zu form. Sorry for the long question. So nai de wa irare nai works when you feel bad about it, uh, feel bad slash it would irritate you if you don't do it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good, yeah. And it does work positively. Yes, as well as negatively. That's good, yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go, shiru. Um, the red does can't you read the red properly? I can use a different shade, maybe um I don't know. I could use whatever, it doesn't really matter, but yeah. Um shiru, shirazu. So let's let's maybe make one more. Um of course for ichidan verbs it's very simple. If we have taberu, because it's an ichidan verb, you just really just get rid of ru, right? And you can add zu. Tabezu. Uh oops, I kinda of forgot one stroke there. Tabezu. Okay. Uh, I can see it. Maybe your brightness is turned down, though. My name color, though. <laughs> Whichever color the opposite of green is. <laughs> I don't know what the opposite of green is. Um, I don't know. Is this is this better? Orange? 
Is this easier to read? I can go with orange if orange is easier to read. Right? Is this easier? No idea. Easier than red? Okay. To me, it's like, it, it seems the same, but I don't know. I also don't have preferences, so there you go. Maybe y'all just need to buy better screens, huh? How about that? Buy an OLED. I don't have a dark red ready right now. Um, zoo attaches to the negative rule. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say about Zoo. So um, that's just the Zoo form, okay? You don't really have to worry too much about it. Choco Choco, thanks for following. What you do have to worry now about is how it actually plays into what we're talking about. So the formation that you end up with, essentially, is just... Um, let me have it here. Let me see. Oh, wait. Oops. I'm, I'm way in the wrong place here. Just need to scroll down. Um, right. What we end up with is essentially just very similar, but instead of Naide... Oh, yo, Nixie! Thanks so much for gifting two subs. Thank you! What we end up with is instead of nai de wa irarenai, right? Instead of that, we essentially just get zu. Zu ni wa, okay? So the way it forms is zu ni wa. Again, you have the wa, and then the rest is the same. Irarenai. I. Oh, that's kind of ugly. Ra re nai. Okay? Zu ni wa irarenai. And again, it's the same, okay? The meaning is exactly the same. Sorry, but what does zu do to the verb? It makes it a negative conjunctive. Again, um, just think of zu as the same as naide, okay? That's really what you have to do in your brain is zu is naide. It's the, it's, it's the same thing. Grammatically and in terms of meaning, it does the same thing. It's a negative conjunctive. There's no, there's no special sauce about it, really. It is a little bit more written language than it is... Um, shinaku. I like to think of zu is like shinakute and yeah, well, there's also the thing of like shinakute and shinaide, which are essentially the same thing again. Um, it gets really into the weeds. It's more a matter of like how you phrase something rather than what it actually means. Um, like it's, it's almost a preference at that point. It's really, really hard to distinguish shinakute and shinaide. It's almost impossible. They are grammatically speaking, they're completely identical. And then, like, in terms of how they are used, it's very similar. There's just some places where one is used and the other is not. For example, shinakute wa ikenai is, is used, but shinaide wa ikenai is not used. But there's not really, like, a good, like, an easy reason for that. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Thank you for following as well, Shadow and shelo Chang, I guess. Um, so, you end up with zu ni wa irarenai. And again, you... Um, it, it's the same as naide wa irarenai. That's just to point that out, okay? Either one you see, you can translate them exactly the same. The only point, like, zu, zu ni wa iranenai is a little bit more, like, written language. That's it, right? Um, or, or a bit more formal in most cases. But you'll see both, okay? You are, you're likely to encounter both pretty frequently. It's kind of like a mixed bag. All right, let me make some space. I have example sentences, of course, so we can, like, move to those now. But first, let's do, like, a, a general overview overview thingy again. So I got to get rid of this and then here. So in both cases, real quick, inakcha irarenai doesn't exist. I think it... Inai... Hmm. Uh, well, shinakcha, shinakcha irarenai. I think it should be possible to say this. I'm not quite sure people say it. We'd have to like Google it. I have to like Google it and see if anyone uses it. But yeah. Um, Shinaide wa irarenai. Usually you say shinaide because the thing is that uh, nakcha is the short version of nakte wa and not nai, like not naide or not um, shinaide, right? It's that's why like it doesn't sound right because it it would be shinakte wa irarenai, uh, but but um, like and that's not as you as common I don't think or it's not used so it's kind of weird. But to sum it up, in both cases naide wa irarenai and um, they both express that you're succumbing to something like you can't you literally can't help but do it It's like when an urge you have some sort of urge and it just wins, right? You can't keep yourself from doing it 
Um, it's generally not used for things that spontaneously happen. It's generally used for a situation where you, you kind of lose control or you are unable to hold yourself back. Okay. Um, it, it's not generally used for things that you just do without like thinking, right? And it can also be used for positive things. Um, so for example, like, you know, can't help but like someone, right? Like, um, I guess skinny or something or or something like that. You can use it for like positive things. And I do think I have some example for that. That's still vague. Everything is vague. Everything is always vague until we get examples. That's what the examples are for though. Ah. Alright. Can't I give my mom a hug when I meet her? Yeah, stuff like that. That's a good one. I, I had like positive ones before I started the stream and my brain is kind of empty now, so yeah. I can catch up. I wish I started to see the stream early so I can catch up. I do record these um, and I try to upload them. Um, we're a little bit behind, but there is at least like 40 of these on YouTube that you can watch right now. It's right here. So I have tons of examples. Not tons, but I have I have plenty of examples. So let's just look at those, right? Yeah, so here we have, and I have both examples here. So no ma, you can see here, this would be the negative stem, right? It's this next stem. Um, negative stem and then both naide or zuni and then it follows with wa irare nakatta or irare nakatta nda. So what does this mean? Well, kaisa de yanakoto ga atte. So there were bad things, right? There were unpleasant things. Yanakoto is essentially like unpleasant things at the company. So like I had a bad day at the company or there were bad things that happened at the company. Um, noma naide wa irare nakatta nda. Like I couldn't help myself. Um, I, or I couldn't stop myself from drinking. Just kind of like, Zuni no ho ga shizen. Da yo na, kono bai da to, doushite ka wakaranai kedo. No ma zuni wa irare nakatta. I agree with Ayafumi. Zuni sounds better in this case. Um, I would probably go with Zuni, but I couldn't tell you why. It's like, it just kind of sounds better. But they're both, they would both, grammatically speaking, they both work. Um, no ma zuni wa irare nakatta nda. So it basically means like, there are bad things at the company, so I couldn't help myself from drink I couldn't stop myself from drinking like I ended up drinking like against my better judgment I drank like I you know I know I shouldn't but I lost control or I just couldn't control myself next one is this one daieto chu demo tabezu ni wa irare nai like daieto chu demo demo here means like even when right even chu daieto chu when dieting even then right so like even during my diet, I guess. I feel like this should be 100%. I don't know why it isn't. Even during my diet, right? Even during my diet, I can't help but eat. Is there a reason ni is added to zu or is it just for form? Just its form. Um, it's kind of hard to answer this. Um, zu ni is a very common thing to say. Uh, like it's a very common pairing but why specifically there is a knee there i don't think it's i don't think it helps to question that too deeply for this case uh as all it's always there um i don't think you'd find it sounds weird the the knee is just there just like um i don't know what would we other example like demo is just de and mo. It's just it shows up as a pair very often. Though you can have zu by itself sometimes. Um, in this case of the zu ni wa irarenai, isn't it just an adverb? Uh, yeah, essentially I guess because zu is like naku, nakte, nakte. It's it's kind of adverbial, I guess. It's also kind of conjunctive. It. I mean, it. It's like however you want to think about it, really. Um, we could go digging into this, but we probably wouldn't get like a very satisfying answer beyond just it's just what is said, right? What I can imagine is that it's probably a thing where it used to be that you always had to add it, and then eventually, you know, I think of it as without doing X, which is an adverb. Without is without an adverb. I don't know, but yeah. I guess that makes sense. Without is such a weird word in English. Um, because like without cats, is that still adverbial? I don't know. Who knows? English is complicated. 
Melam, thanks for following. Photo, arigato gozaimasu. What I can imagine is that you had like ni there. Because if you think about it, zu is already a conjunctive. So it already links to the next clause, to the next verb. It's like a te or a de. So then we don't really need the ni for it to be like become, because it doesn't make sense. If you think, well, if you just think about it in the framework of adverbs, like it doesn't quite make sense. Ni usually makes adverbs out of um, uh, no adjectives. Like, uh, but like, zu isn't really a na adjective, neither is um, naku, because naku is already adverbial. We don't have to add anything else to make it adverbial. Like, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of annoying. How do you become fluent in speak Nihongo? Lots of practice. Um, that's it, right? So, daietto tsu de mo tabezu ni wa irarenai. The short answer is just say tabezu. If you want to say this phrase, just say it like this. Like, that's the correct way of doing it, really. You should just learn it as like a set phrase. Just like, nai de wa, right? That's the easiest one. Um, even during my diet, I can't help but eat, right? I, I have to eat. I, ca I can't control myself. And then here's another sentence. Boku no kanojo ni tsutomerare leba kawanai de wa irarenai yo. Oh, this is the wrong. This is susumeru. Oops, I read this wrong. Wait, let me correct this. I was like, hmm? I was like, this doesn't make any sense, but the reason it doesn't make any sense is because it's my mistake. This is susumer, um, susu, susumerare leba, susumerare leba, which is a, like a difficult, it's a tricky conjugation here, really. But yeah, oh, let me go back to this layer. All right, I'm gonna, oh shoot, Blech. wrong keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this just so we have space. So first of all, boku no kanoji ni susumerare leba. Um, this is a bit of a mouthful here. It's actually a passive potential form. Uh, or no, sorry, it's a passive uh, conditional form. So it means if I'm being recommended, right? If I'm being uh, recommended something. I know it's a bit of a mouthful. Kawanai de wa irarenai yo. And here it just means can't help but buy, right? Like, can't help but buy like i can't help but buy it it's not a sentence but a you problem yes <laughs> if i'm being recommended something by my girlfriend i can't help but buy it right so like i i can't control myself i need to buy it i have to buy it right like that okay next I have some. I have a little bit more stuff. Um, Punishoteki onedari sarete wa no ho ga ii kamo. Yeah, that. I guess that. I I guess that makes sense. But punisho no nanka imi ga chigao desho. Ma. I guess it doesn't really matter though. How many year to be fluent based on your experience? It depends on your work. Um, it depends on how much work you put in, and it depends on what you mean with fluent, I guess. it. I would say like five years is like a pretty good average for most people, um, if you work hard. Uh, I have two more. Um, so this one here, again, this is more of a, this is more of an example of like, uh, you know, like, maybe not. And then this one here is more like, okay. And the reason here is this is to, em I wanted to emphasize this like spontaneous action thing. Usually you don't use nai de wa irarenai, irarenakatta for like spontaneous things, right? Like spontaneous. If it's something spontaneous, like you're just happy and you're buying it in the moment, usually not like a place where you use nai de wa irarenai. More like shimatta at that at that point. Teshimau is more appropriate. Teshimau also has this connotation of like you do it without being fully in control or doing it sort of uh, spontaneous. Oh really? Is that how you spell that? Okay, I'm not gonna bother then. That's not a word that deserves to be spelled if it's that silly. Um, let me drink some coffee. So. Um, a good, a, a much better way to say for these like spontaneous accidental actions is teshimau, okay? So that's where we have teshimau for. I have made a lesson on teshimau actually, so you could check that out if you want to learn more about it. But this is like a good place to use teshimau, right? Um, 
also kind of similar it's like accidentally doing something but much better for spontaneous actions for spontaneous things like impulses generally you wouldn't use it's more like for when you're really like trying to control yourself for like a little bit longer um or chao well it's the same thing teshimao and chao is the same thing it's just one is short um teshimao is literally just chao it's, it's the same speaking of chao Chao cha, chao cha. Yeah, well, in Kansai Ben it is, yeah. Because chao is also chigao in Kansai Ben, but not in standard Japanese. So, the last thing um, that I want to mention with this topic is quickly comparing it to. Oops, wrong one. Uh, quickly comparing it to Zaru Oenai. We actually talked very quickly about Zaru Oenai in my last stream, I think. I, just real quick, Zaru and I, again, a very sort of... Um, did you translate those two examples? Oh, did I not? I thought, okay, maybe I thought they were like too obvious, but... Um, it just, they both just mean like... Well, this one, again, you sh probably shouldn't use it. But this one here means, I was so happy I ended up buying it. Like, uh, you, it was kind of like an in-the-moment thing, right? In the moment, I was happy and I ended up buying it, kind of like that. Right? You were happy and that it led to you buying it without thinking. Whereas this one, it's the same meaning, like I was happy I couldn't help buying it, but it's a bit awkward because of the reasons I mentioned. Like you should probably not say this because it goes against the, um, it goes against the like rule of you shouldn't use dewa iradenai for spontaneous actions. That's what it means. So the last part that I want to quickly talk about is with uh, zaru oenai. Zaru oenai is a pretty formal um, phrase. It's not super hard though. Zaru oenai is another way of saying must or ought, and or or like can't help but to do something. But the difference is that zaru oenai is more for obligations. Okay. Sounds like old Japanese. It's a little bit old fashioned. Um, you will definitely see it more often in writing. By far, it's much more common in writing. It's almost never said anymore. Um, it is quite archaic, but it is still officially part of JLPT grammar and not N1, it's N2 grammar as far as I know. Most lists treat it as like N2 grammar and it is still something that you will see pretty frequently. Um, in general, anything that uses zaru is kind of old-fashioned because it's just kind of an old-fashioned conjugation. Zaru is actually a old negative rentaike so attributive conjugation. I'm not gonna go into how to use zaru here because it doesn't matter. Once again, zaru attaches to the negative stem, so it behaves exactly the same as the other two that we talked about with naide and zuniwa. They're, they're exactly the same in terms of conjugation. And when you say zaru o enai, you basically say that you must do something or you can't help but do something, but you're talking a little bit more about the obligation of it sort of like it is your obligation to do it right and that's why you must do it that's why you can't help but do it and for that i also have um, two, exa two examples um these are both kind of fine i guess but um the latter one is definitely better so again here this is like the more questionable example and this is like the more proper example usually depending on the situation i guess you could say this but um I guess they, these these could both be fine. I guess um, it does really depend on the nuance that you were gonna that you're gonna go for. Um, yeah, like in this case, you could probably like you could you could argue that both are fine. It just depends on like the nuance that you're going for. But um, here it's kind of like "注意しないではいられなかった." Um, like here is like saying like you really didn't want to pay attention, but you had to. So "酔っ払い" means a drunk, like drunk person, like a drunk. Okay, like a drunk person. Need chui attention, right? Attention. Chui suru means to pay attention to or to be careful. So here is like maybe you know, um, mi mizaru oenai so dane. That's true. Here it's like saying like you didn't want to pay attention to them, but you couldn't help. Maybe because they're being so loud or whatever. And then down here, same sentence, but with sezaru oenakatta just means like you felt obligated to pay attention, right? Like you felt it was the right thing to do. You felt like not doing it would have been wrong. That's kind of the difference. But um, the broad meaning of those two sentences is the same really. Yeah. 
and that's kind of how that works okay so in uh, review you essentially have wait let me drink coffee first right is that kind of is that kind of clear again don't worry too much about said zaru um or zaru and i um if you don't if you've never seen it just kind of take my word for it that it just means you can't help but because of some obligation or moral reason and that it's pretty archaic but still used every now and again right the border violator i have to shoot the border violator. well it kind of depends on which one you want to go with, right? And once again, there is not usually one right way and one wrong way of doing things. Often, um, often it's much more nuanced than this, um, whether you're shooting people at the border or not, but um, often it's much more nuanced where really you could say either one. It's just a matter of like, which nuance is the one that you actually want to convey or vice uh, or like the other way around, which nuance is the one that the author wants to convey to you or the speaker when they use it, right? Does that make sense? It's not really about right or wrong. It's more about like, what what are we actually saying if we go down to the nuance, right? And that's that's how most of these grammar points work. It's not like you can always say like, you should always use this or you should always use that. No, it's more like sometimes you use this and sometimes you use that. And there's a reason for why you use it each one, right? So, and, and it also depends like, for each situation, you can't just say one is right and the other one's wrong because it does also depend on like the emotion that you want to convey. Like if you do want to emphasize that you felt obligated to do it, you should use zaru and I maybe over like zuni ai maybe, right? Like maybe that's what you want to do because you want to really emphasize that strong sense of obligation that you felt. But if you didn't feel that, maybe you, you want to emphasize something else. So you use something else, right? That's how language works. We choose based on kind of like whatever we feel in the moment. Um, to sum up this, to sum this up then, um, essentially, right, we had the two forms. Naide. Wa. Irare nai, right? It's such a long thing to write. Naide wa irare nai and zuni wa irare nai. And again, they mean the same thing. One just being maybe a little bit more written language than spoken, but you might also hear it like said. And then it also kind of depends on case by case. But I would, I would, um, I would rely more on just exposure. Like we had the other one earlier. I forgot what it was. I, I forgot what it was, but it, where Ayakumi uh, pointed out that one sounds more natural. These are the kind of things that I would never worry about because at the end of the day, natural language is never something you're going to learn by looking at like some grammar points or some example sentences, but it's something you're going to learn through like hundreds or thousands of hours of exposure. Um, sorry, that's zui. Uh, zuni. Zuni wa. Right? Same, same thing. Um, just two different ways of phrasing it. So, for when you can't help but do something. Is that something that can be used in a casual conversation? Um, you could use it. It kind of does depend. If you do, if you use these forms too much, you will come across as very pompous. But if it's just like once or twice to really... It, sometimes zaru uh, and is used jokingly because it does sound so... Um, it does sound so archaic, well, uh, or, or it does sound so um, grand, right? So sometimes uh, Zaru and I can be used to like make a, have an effect because it stands out. It really does stand out when someone says something like this. It's kind of like when you event, like, it's kind of like mixing in words in English like ought or shall that aren't really used anymore, but sometimes you can use them to make a point or even to be comedic if you want to quote Gandalf, I guess, you shall not pass or whatever, or shan't, I don't know. Um, or, or, or like when people say you needn't worry, right? It's not something that you, you would use all the time, but you can use it. I mean, it's like to, to make a point, but it sounds kind of like flowery in that case, but yeah. It's kind of, I feel like Zaru and I is kind of similar. It gets mixed in, but it's usually not, um, it's usually kind of, it doesn't really stand out. Can't help but, yes, can't help but, but, but. <laughs> so yeah, both of these for using, for doing something like you can't control yourself. And both of these mostly used for non-spontaneous actions, not things that you are just overwhelmed with some emotion that you do something, more like, you know you shouldn't and you, you from the start, you know you shouldn't, but you still do it. That's the kind of like, nai de wa irare nai. Or in the other way as well, like, 
um, maybe you don't want to, but you still do it, or or like you can't help but do it. Again, it can be used for positive things as well. Like um, Cole brought it up. Like every time, you know, every time you see someone, like every time I see my girlfriend, I can't help but hug her, even if we're in public or whatever. Like like you know, it's I my you know my feelings like I just takes over and I can't control myself. That kind of thing, I guess. That's it. Yeah. Do you? Do any of you have any questions about this? For people like me that are late. LATE! <laughs> That's okay. It's okay to be late. I feel like- I don't know if this is the new tablet, but I feel like this tablet is more leggy than the other one, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's just- that might just be the software. I have no idea. <laughs> that's it! We did it! We- we have learned how to say, can't help but. <laughs> um... You could say like, uh, I don't know, Binkyul season you I didn't I can't help but learn to care for a customer for a couple of, of times. That's okay. That's why I record these, I guess. All right, I'm going to make space here. Do you have stabilization on? Tiny bit because it gets too jittery. I have 3% of smoothing on. Um, because without the smoothing, it becomes really jittery, I notice. Like, lines that should be just nice, just don't look as nice. Because I have, apparently, I have Parkinson's or whatever. I guess it's fine, this is without. It's just, yeah, this is without, I guess it's fine. No, but it's still just as laggy, to be fair. It's like, the same amount of lag. I didn't have that with the other tablet, funny enough. There might also be other reasons, I'm not sure. I have one idea that it, what it could be, but I will take care of that another time. Hey, 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 look at that. We're through. Thank you very much. Um, the stream will continue. We'll do something else. I don't know what yet. Probably just chill for a bit and like chat. But that was the grammar lesson. Again, if you missed it, um, I do record these. I will post the link to the playlist again. I should really uh, upload the others. Um, I'm like five or six episodes behind. I think I will I will try and like dump these all on YouTube so that they're finally there. I keep promising and I will get around to do it um, eventually. But yeah, that was that. Thank you very much. If you have any questions still, feel free to ask them. It doesn't really have to be about the lesson. It can be anything. I'll see you in the next lesson if not.